Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and we are going to look at the 2021 G.I. Joe Classified series Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins movie versions of Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. I have them here in the packaging. We will take them out of the packaging to look at the figures and accessories, but let's look at the packaging first. For Snake Eyes, we have a white background with the Rashikage symbol. That's a nice contrast with the white in the background and the black figure in front of it. We have logos for the Snake Eyes movie and the G.I. Joe classified series. We have some artwork here for Snake Eyes. This is not the best artwork for Snake Eyes by any stretch, but it's fine. It's acceptable. We have more artwork on the side showing the actor Henry Golding. Uh, we have Snake Eyes, and we have that Arashikage symbol in a different style. On the back of the box, we have some generic Snake Eyes movie artwork. Uh, this artwork is nice. It looks good, but it is not unique to this figure. This this artwork is on all of the movie figures and there is no file card of any kind. On the top of the box we see this is number 16 in the series and on this side of the box we have these symbols which represent Snake Eyes' specialties. This one means he's dead, this one is some kind of sex toy I think, this one means stick a needle in his eye, and this one means he likes snowflakes. Let's pull the figure out and take a look at it. Here is the figure and the accessories outside of the package. There are far fewer accessories than we normally get with classified action figures, but these accessories probably cost more than the typical classified accessories, given the fact that one of the accessories is an alternate head with the likeness of the actor Henry Golding, which probably had to be licensed. The figure comes with a katana sword. This is the morning light sword that was used in the movie. It has a silver blade with a touch of gold at the base, and it has a black handle. The figure also comes with a sheath for the sword. The sheath is in base black plastic with gold paint. I think the gold paint looks excellent. There is a peg to attach the sheath to the figure and the sheath will fit the sword so Snake Eyes can holster his sword. Snake Eyes also includes these two daggers which I accidentally left in the packaging so I didn't include it in the accessory count at first. These daggers are fine but unfortunately there's no way to attach them to the figure. The only other accessory is the alternate head in the likeness of Henry Golding. Uh, it is a reasonable likeness of Henry Golding. It's not perfect but it's okay. It's acceptable. We will try this head on the figure later. Looking at the figure itself, the figure is is in almost all black. It's a mix of glossy and matte black. There is a little bit of paint on the figure. There is a red Arashikage emblem on the left arm. There is a silver belt buckle, but that appears to be the only spots of paint anywhere on the figure. That kind of makes sense since the first version of Snake Eyes had no paint applications at all. The articulation on this figure is excellent as it is on all classified figures. There's a wide range of motion for the head. There's a decent range of motion for the arms. They don't lift up quite as far as you would want them to, but they do swivel at the shoulder. It does have double jointed elbows and and it has a twist at the wrist. That's nice. It has a hinge at the rib cage, so you can get some motion at the rib cage. The torso will twist with excellent range of motion. A wide split on the thighs, and they have a thigh cut, so the thighs will twist as well. It has double jointed knees, and I just spotted some more paint. It has some tiny red dots on the knees. That's hardly noticeable. Moving on from that, um, it has hinged and rocker ankles. Really excellent articulation on this figure, which is to be expected for a G.I. Joe classified figure. He does have one more item that I guess I should mention as an accessory. He has this strap on the back. The strap has an octagonal hole that lines up with the hole in the back. And if you line those up, you should be able to peg in the sword through both of those holes and there you go. So Snake Eyes can wear his sword on his back. Let's try that alternate head. Let's pop off the standard head. There we go. It's got a, a little ball on the neck post and we pop the alternate head on. So take some effort, but there we go. 
pop the alternate head on and we have Snake Eyes unmasked looking like Henry Golding. And like I said, it's a reasonable likeness. The black on the uniform goes right up to his jawline, right up to his ears. And I guess that's okay. That's pretty close to how it looked in the movie. This would be a problem if the skin on the neck were exposed at all. That would be an unpainted detail. This figure narrowly avoids that problem. Comparing movie Snake Eyes with the standard release G.I. Joe classified Snake Eyes, the standard release has a lot more detail, it has more paint applications, and I just think it looks better than the movie version. The movie version doesn't look bad, uh, the movie Snake Eyes is a bit more sleek, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but the standard release just has a lot more going on. When you add the Deluxe Snake Eyes to the mix, which has more color variety and all of the detail of the standard release, the movie release Snake Eyes just feels a little lacking. One thing I have to commend them for is using all unique parts for the movie Snake Eyes figure. It doesn't look like they reused any parts from the standard release. Comparing the packaging of this movie Snake Eyes with earlier versions, we have the Deluxe Lux Snake Eyes packaging, which I think is the best. I just think it looks great. But that white background and the red Arashikake emblem of the movie release packaging, I think is better than the standard release. Let's turn our attention to Storm Shadow, starting with the packaging and that black background with the red Arashikage emblem is a nice contrast to the white figure in front of it. On the front, as with Snake Eyes, we have some logos, we have some artwork, and I like this artwork. I think this is better artwork than on the Snake Eyes packaging. On the side, we have some additional artwork, but not the light likeness of the actor. I wonder if the actor did not approve of having his likeness on the packaging, although he does have his likeness on one of the accessories. On the back of the box we have that same generic movie artwork. We've already seen this, nothing special here. We see this is number 17 in the series. On the other side of the box we have these symbols for his specialties. These are mostly the same as Snake Eyes, except for this one which looks like a honeycomb, so I believe this means Storm Shadow is a beekeeper. Now let's pull Storm Shadow out and take a look at this figure. This is the figure and the accessories outside of the packaging, and right off the bat we see Storm Shadow has more accessories than Snake Eyes, with two swords instead of one, there's a backpack that can hold both swords, and the alternate head in the likeness of the actor Andrew Koji. Looking at these swords for Storm Shadow, they appear to be the same as the sword for Snake Eyes, but with white wrapping around that handle instead of black, so they still look pretty good. Storm Shadow includes this off-white backpack with a sheath for each sword, and a peg on the back side of it. There doesn't seem to be an up or down for this backpack. It can fit either way on the figure. It will hold both of Storm Shadow's swords. There is a right way to put the swords in though because of the holes in the sheath. To put the swords in you really need to put them in with the blades facing each other. The peg on this backpack will fit in the octagonal hole in the back of the figure. I just plug that in, it fits pretty securely, and now Storm Shadow can carry both of his swords. Finally, we get to the alternate head. It is a reasonable likeness of Andrew Koji. I think it looks good, and we will try it on the figure a little later. Looking at the figure itself, we see the figure is not a bright white. It is a dull off-white, and I think that's okay. What is not great is that there are almost no other paint applications, no spots of color on this at all. Just a little bit of silver paint on the, the chest and the jacket thing, whatever that is. Snake Eyes had that red Arashikage emblem. This figure does not, and this figure could really use a splash of color somewhere on it. Storm Shadow has that excellent classified articulation with a good range of motion on the head. There is a collar here, and that does get in the way a little bit. Uh, he has the same basic range of motion on the arms with those nice double-jointed elbows and the twist on the wrist. We do have a slight problem with this accessory piece that drapes from his belt that does get in the way of articulation, not so much at the waist, but at the hip, it really hinders that leg split. You have to kind of slide it up to get the full leg split, and that looks a little odd. It still has the thigh cut, so you can have that twist at the thigh. It's got, still got the nice double jointed knees and the rocker and hinged ankles. I like this masked storm shadow, but let's go ahead and take this head off and try out the alternate head and the likeness of the actor. Ah, that takes some force to 
pop that on. Now we have an unmasked Storm Shadow, and I think this head looks pretty good, but this head has a problem that the Snake Eyes head does not have, and that is the neck. This neck looks like it's supposed to be skin and not part of the uniform, and that white goes all the way up to the jawline and the hairline and the ears, and that looks like an unpainted detail. It worked okay on Snake Eyes, but doesn't really work as well on Storm Shadow. The only other classified Storm Shadow figure I have to compare this with is the Arctic Mission Storm Shadow. It's not really a fair comparison. These figures have entirely different inspirations. I prefer the Arctic Mission Storm Shadow. That white and black together look really good, and I like the gold. It provides the spot of color that the movie figure really needs. As with Snake Eyes, I have to commend them for not reusing parts. This movie Storm Shadow has entirely separate parts from the Arctic Missions version. That was my review of the G.I. Joe Classified Series movie versions of Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. I hope you enjoyed it. With the alternate heads like that, it looks like they decapitated the actors, doesn't it? That's not fair. The movie wasn't that bad. We will get back to vintage G.I. Joe soon, but I hope you don't mind some modern G.I. Joe in the interim. I do have a Patreon. Please support me on Patreon so I can continue to do these G.I. Joe toy reviews. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. And until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.